Nowadays, whenever we think about the ESCs, we also think about the BL Heli, BL Heli S, BL Heli M, and BL Heli 32 as really the firmware that drives basically majority of the vast majority of the all the ESCs for the multi rotor and also probably pretty pretty also the majority of the aeroplane ESCs. However, if we go back in time, um, like five years ago, <laughs> you will notice that back then, no, there was no BL Heli. I mean, there was BL Heli, but uh, for the beginning, the the software, the firmware for the ESC that everyone were using, or at least trying to use, was something called the Simon K. And uh, besides Simon K, there were also like, Nobody knows what's running no GISLESS devices, firmware that nobody really cared. However, then they the BL Heli and in the last five years BL Heli basically monopolized the multi-rotor ESC business. And while well, in the beginning the BL Heli was fully open source, now the latest BL Heli 32, for example, is no longer open source. It's a closed software, and if a manufacturer of the ESC would like to use the BL Heli in their devices, they have to pay, which is fine, completely, absolutely fine. However, from time to time, there are companies that are trying to, let's say, change, or entities that are trying to change the status quo. For example, two years ago, I had some prototypes of the ESCs from Matek, which were not really using any BL Heli, eh, but that project, let's say, I asked them what's happening with that, and they said, yeah, we postponed it for the better times. Now we have the better times, because because today I will show you, no, I will not show you, but today I will try something called the AM32. It's not connected with Matek, it's not connected with BL Heli, it's the fully open source firmware for the modern 32-bit based on the STM32 architecture ESCs. It is, like I said, open source in the relatively early development firmware. I only connected this to my Pyrx 5 over here and tested, okay, the motors are spinning. There is a separate tool for configuring uh, those ESC with kind of, let's say, limited um, number of features, but to be honest, it almost has everything you need. And... And what? And today I will just find out if this works, uh, how does it feel in the air, if there is any noticeable difference between the AM32 and the BL Heli 32, which I had previously flashed on this device. And, uh, and if you are interested, then I think probably what you should do is to start following the topic if you are not yet following the development of the AM32. By the way, um, if you would like to flash the AM32 on your current ESCs, there might be something like a problem because they release the target files only for a few models and this requires a special bootloader. So you'd have to use your, if you don't have it yet, ST-Link um, ST device to flash the bootloader, then to connect uh, to the flashing uh, device via the standard uh, interface via the BL Heli uh, 4 if or if I don't remember how the thing is called, and then flash the latest AM32. So, right now, I will take my quad with the ESC, which, by the way, I got pre-flashed already. So, thanks a lot, Dusking and Al uh, Al Alka Motors. Thanks a lot, guys, for sending me the hardware and giving me opportunity to take uh, one of the first looks, uh, probably in the RC hobby, on uh, what AM32 can do right now. I have no idea yet, so let me take my goggles, let me take my radio, make me do a few flips and then I will get to you again and we will discuss the details.
Now, what is left is the answer to a question. Does the AM32 ESC firmware that is not really a BL Heli, but still drives the ESC works? And after using uh, exactly four LiPos on my favorite quad and catching one failsafe with the brand new Ghost, hmm? interesting right i can say that yeah definitely this is something that we should be observing taking a look at and hoping that one day they will be they will become an actual competition for the BL Heli. Why? Because the monopoly is never really good. And if you are the only one on the market with the prime product and there is no competition, this usually means you are not evolving and this is not good for us, the consumers. So we as a consumers, we do want to have a competition for BL Heli and not in form of BL Heli M. No, something completely not even remotely connected with the BL Heli organization itself. Now, uh, was this the best ESC I ever used? Well, no, there are some problems. Uh, maybe it's my wiring, maybe it's something else. I think it's my wiring. I, this is my, let's say, uh, wild guess. Uh, I was not able to get the ESC telemetry at all and I was not able to get the uh, current meter readouts. I just think that I swapped the wires between and hopefully I haven't smoked anything on the either the ESC or the flight controller. However, besides that, everything was fine. Everything was good. The quad was behaving nicely in the air. It was controllable. Motors were not catching any desings. Nothing bad was really happening. And if I would have to be honest, I also noticed something like uh, two differences between this quad with exactly the same tune, because I changed nothing with the tune of the uh, quad or version of the firmware. It's still exactly the same. Um, the feeling was slightly slightly softer, a slightly, let's say, gentle feeling on the motor. I think that it's because I left the advance, the motor timing on the default value, which is only 15, which is slightly less. Well, actually, kind of a lot of less because on my second quad, on previous uh, ESC I was using there, it was like 21 degrees. So there is probably this difference that meant the quadcopter was softer, uh, but still kind of responsible. Everything was fine over there and also consumed quite a lot of less energy because usually this quad allows me to, with the previous CSC was allowing me to fly for like three minutes, three minutes, 20 without the GoPro in the with the same flying uh, style in the same course over here. However, this with this one, with those ESCs, probably because I really have the motor timing really, really, really down, but it was kind of soft and smooth, pretty nice for the flippity floppy uh, and my flying style, I got flying times like 4 minutes 30 seconds. So there is something. Either the hardware is much better, either the AM32 is much more efficient than the BL Heli 32, or maybe it's just because I left the motor timings lower. So um, I'm really hoping that uh, they will succeed, that the AM32, we will be seeing much, 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 much more of them, and I will be able to fix the problem with the uh, current meter not working, which is really strange because it really should be working. This is not really related with the with the ESC at all because it's using the current meter, the physical current meter and the analog sensor. So probably I really messed some something with the wiring and I really hope that they will be a real life competition for the BL Heli and we, the consumers, will be very, very, very happy. In the future episodes, I probably, about the AM32, I, I will probably make a short overview of the configuration tool and uh, if I will have some time and find the ESCs I can flash with the AM32 because I don't have any target compatible with this firmware. I will maybe also try to figure out how to make the tutorial on flashing AM32 to the ESCs. But this is really like great unknown because right now I do not have any AM32 compatible ESCs besides those that the guys sent me and they are already flashed with the colored bootloader and it doesn't make much sense to flashing them with what's already flashed uh, inside of them. So um, thank you very much for watching. 
good job guys i'm i really i really think that this is this is something something cool and it's very good that the am32 is the open source if you want to participate you can go there on the github you just can maybe i will even build this myself after all i'm a developer right right okay so thank you very much for watching and until the next one bye bye